Today we're going to learn about something called conditional statements inside JavaScript. And conditional statements is something we use very often inside JavaScript whenever we want to build some kind of application that we want to show inside a website. So you will need to learn about conditional statements at some point. So the way conditional statements work is that we have some kind of statement that has to be true in order for the JavaScript to run a specific block of code. So to give you guys an example here, I built a very basic HTML5 setup. I have a paragraph tag that has an ideas test. And inside my script tags, I'm gonna go ahead and say that we have a variable called x, which is equal to five. So now that we set variable x equal to five, I can go ahead and go underneath the variable and I can start writing a conditional statement. So I'm gonna go ahead and say if, which is actually one of the three conditional statements we're gonna talk about today. We also have something called a switch, but we're gonna talk about in the next episode. So we're just gonna go ahead and stick with the three first ones. So we're gonna say if parentheses, curly brackets, which means that right now I'm checking if whatever's inside the parentheses is true, then it needs to run whatever's inside the curly brackets. So inside the curly brackets, I can actually go ahead and say document dot get element by ID parentheses. And inside the parentheses, I'm gonna go ahead and say we want to get test, which is the paragraph we have up here, dot inner HTML, which is equal to a string called it works. Like so. So right now, if whatever's inside the parentheses is true, it's gonna go ahead and print out it works inside the browser, which right now, as you guys can see, we have nothing in here. If I go back inside my code, I can go inside the parentheses and I can say, well, if X is equal to two, then we can go ahead and write it works inside the browser, but because right now X is not equal to two, it's equal to five. If I go inside the browser, as you guys can see, we get nothing. If I go back inside my code and change this to five, which right now, as you guys can see, it is equal to five, you guys can see we get it works. So this is the basic idea behind a conditional statement. We basically just go in and say, well, if this is true, then we're gonna go ahead and write whatever's inside the curly brackets. Now, of course, right now, this is a very simple example. We could also go in and check the time. We talked about the time format in one of the previous episodes. We could actually go in and check the amount of seconds that we have since 1970 and say, well, if the date right now is past a specific date, then it should write something inside the browser, for example. So this is the first conditional statement we have inside JavaScript called if. Now, of course, sometimes you want to check more than one statement. What if I want to check, well, if this is equal to one, then I want to write instead of it works, I want to say it is one. Now, if I have another statement that needs to change according to whatever the value is, I can go ahead and say, well, we also have something called a else if parentheses curly brackets. So right now I'm not checking if this up here is true. I'm also checking if whatever is inside the parentheses down here is true. So I can actually go ahead and copy what we have up here, paste it in and say, if X is equal to two, then we want to write whatever is down here, which is the document get element by ID. But instead of saying it is one, I want to say it is two. So if I were to go up and change X to two, you guys can see that right now inside the browser, it says it is two. So basically what it's doing here is it first goes down to the if statement and checks, is this actually true? Because X is not equal to one, it's gonna go ahead and ignore this block of code and go down to the next one. So right now it's checking, is it equal to two? Then it's gonna go ahead and print this code if X is equal to two. Now, of course, right now, let's say we have some kind of user input from a website and the user decides to type something that we don't have inside one of these statements here. Let's say they said uh, 48,938, which is, you know, we're not gonna make, you know, 50,000 different statements down here because we don't wanna check for each individual statement. So what we can do instead is we can go ahead and write something called an else statement, which is also a conditional statement. So we're gonna write else, curly brackets, and then whatever is not equal to one of these statements is going to run inside the else statement. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the block of code here, paste it inside, 
and say it is something else. Now, if I were to go inside the browser, refresh, you guys can see it says it is something else because it's not equal to one of these two statements here. So one thing you guys need to know about conditional statements is that when we have an if statement, we basically start up a conditional statement line of code. And when we write a else if statement afterwards, which you don't have to, but you can if you want to, we could basically just remove this else if statement. So right now it's just gonna run the else statement if the if statement is not true. Uh, it really depends on how you wanna make it. But one thing that's important for you guys to know is that right now, when you start up an if statement, it's gonna go ahead and start up a series of checks, which means that when we have an else if statement right after the if statement, it's gonna go ahead and see these two as a connected unit. So if this is not true, it's just gonna go ahead and jump to the next one. If the else if statement is not true, it's gonna to run to the else statement. So these are all connected right now. So what we can also do here, just to show you guys, is we can actually go ahead and copy the else if statement we have here. Remember, the if statement is always the first statement. Whenever we have a second statement or a third one or a fourth one, we need to create an else if statement. So if we were to go past the else if statement here and just paste in another else if statement, I can go ahead and change this one to three, like so. And right now, it's just gonna go ahead and run these one by one until it hits one of these that are actually true. So right now, this is not true, this is not true, this is not true. Hey, we have one here called else, which is actually true because it's just gonna go ahead and run if one of these are not true, okay? So this is how conditional statements work. And the reason I decided to do this one is because it's very important we know about these sort of statements when we start doing any kind of exercise. The reason we haven't done any exercises so far inside this series here is because we practically use if else or else if statements in a lot of applications. So we need to know about these first. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time.